It's Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribed feature on NBC's All-Star Festival of Comedy, Music, Mystery, and Drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And now, here we go, friends, to Duffy's Tavern with our guest, Arthur Treacher. And starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Oh, hello, Duffy. Uh, tonight, uh, Arthur Treacher, the distinguished aristocratic uh, English thespian. Yeah. That's right, the sourpuss. <laughs> Well, you know how some guys go around looking as though they smelled something bad? Treacher looks like he found it. <laughs> yeah, you've, uh, you've seen him in pictures, Duffy, you know. He's the tall, thin, silent type, sort of an English Gary Cooper. Only uh, he says, right ho, instead of, yep. <laughs> yeah, he usually takes the part of the butler or the valet, you know. The valet, the guy whose profession is putting on clothes, sort of a reverse gypsy Rose Lee. <laughs> yeah, terrific guy, Duffy, and very, very suave. Your wife says you're suave? <laughs> Duffy, she means you're a big, fat suave. <laughs> well, Treacher's different, you know. He's very stiff and cold and aloof, always wears formal clothes, you know. He sort of gives you the impression he's looking at you from a coffin. <laughs> Well, look, I gotta go now. I'm expecting Clancy to cop. The uh, policeman is having a meeting here, their annual foot bath and discussion club. And I'm arranging for Arthur Treacher to give him a lecture on men's clothes. You'd think they'd rather have Gypsy Rose Lee, huh? Oh, what's the use of talking to you? Archie, how come you're all dressed up tonight? You noticed it, huh? Well, I'm writing this lecture for Arthur Treacher on men's fashions, and I thought I'd better live up to it. You're writing a lecture on men's fashions. Yes, I call it men's fashions through the ages, from the fig leaf to the zipper. <laughs> With that suit you're wearing, you got the nerve to write a lecture on clothes? Are you kidding? Take a look at this garment. Looks just like Saks Fifth Avenue. Looks more like a Fifth Avenue sack. <laughs> what are you talking? This suit was specially made. Yeah, but for who? <laughs> Look at your new suit, but you still got gravy on your shirt, a hole in your socks, and a bastion hat. So what? It's a sports suit. <laughs> Besides, Miss Duffy, among better dressed men, it is considered unde rigueur to look too spick and spat. Uh, man's clothes should have an air of carelessness, you know, casual. Oh, that's why you look like a casualty. <laughs> Look, it happens that I've always been a snappy dresser when I was a kid. You know what the gang on the block used to call me? Archie the Fop. <laughs> you can talk plainer than that. Don't be so wise. Also, I was sometimes called the Pitkin Avenue Beau Brummel. It was because I was always so well-broomed, you know, so fastidious. Uh, kind of a kid if me collar got dirty, I'd change the whole shape. <laughs> Always very color conscious. Mm, what uh, color is that suit supposed to be? Well, it's a pattern designed by me personal modiste, uh, Sinbad the tailor. He <laughs> he calls it his modified rainbow pattern. Mm, let me look at you. Hmm, rainbow is right. You even got the pot at the end. <laughs> Duffy, before you wrap the moat in the other guys, I take a gander at the pot in thine own beam. <laughs> you ain't no tailor's dummy neither, you know. Uh, hello, Arch. Oh, hello, Finnegan. Hey, that bow tie of yours is very smart. Oh, just something I threw on. Oh, very good looking. Yeah, and it goes with everything, Arch. Goes with everything, huh? Yeah. I'm even thinking of wearing a shirt with it. <laughs> How come you're so dressed up? Well, uh, you know, yesterday was Washington's birthday. So why did you get dressed up today? I didn't. I just forgot to get undressed yesterday. <laughs> well, I'm sure Washington will be glad to hear about it. Then. Yeah. Wonderful fellow, George Washington. He's my hero, you know. Oh, how sweet. And how did you celebrate the occasion? 
Oh, in a conventional way. I went around telling people lies. <laughs> But by the way, Arch, I hear all the treachers coming down tonight. That's right, Finnegan. Boy, have I got a great joke for him. <laughs> yeah, great joke. <laughs> uh, what's the joke? Well, uh, I walk right up to him and I say, let's go down to Cone's candy store, Arthur, and I'll treat you to an ice cream soda. Well? Next time you come to life, you must drop in and say it. Now... <laughs> Don't bother me. I got to finish writing this passion lecture. <clears throat> now, let's see here. The attire for an informal coffee clutch is best suited to a cutaway coat. A cutaway coat is discreet, and yet it is revealing, thus lending interest to the clutch. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, Yasha. Yasha Panyaslavnik. How do you do? Wait a minute. Where have you been? Naturally, I'm in the kitchen. I'm working on a new recipe. A new recipe? Yes. First, I'm taking three eggs. These I'm carefully breaking into a bowl. Then I am adding one dash ketchup. Then, with an egg beater, I am thoroughly mixing everything up. Oh, how does it taste? Who cares? I'm giving myself an egg shampoo. <laughs> An egg shampoo and why to catch him? At the same time, I'm taking a Hannah rinse. <laughs> Tell me, how do I look? Simply delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Say, by the by, Chief, that thing you are wearing, what is it? It's me new suit. <laughs> this is a suit? <laughs> yeah, what did you think it was? I don't know. It resembles a tent pitched by a very young boy scout. <laughs> I wouldn't talk if I was you. You ain't so tonsory yourself. My dear you, these are my working clothes. Just wait until you see me tonight after dinner wearing my soup and fish. Your tuxedo? No, soup and fish. I'm a very sloppy eater. <laughs> Chief. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, may I have an hour off, please? An hour off for what? I would like to dress properly for your lecture. Well, okay. What are you going to wear? For your lecture? Yeah. Well, in my buttonhole, I am wearing a daffodilly. <laughs> On my shoes, I'm wearing spats. On my hands, I'm wearing gloves. And most important of all... Yeah? In my ears, I'm wearing cotton. <laughs> Here's a word from RCA Victor. It's been said that the entire history of the American people during the past 50 years can be summed up in one sentence. The automobile took them out of the home, and the television set brought them back. And the set that does most of the bringing back is an RCA Victor. And that's because RCA Victor television is owned most, proved most. In fact, it's million proof. Almost two million families are happily enjoying RCA Victor television in their homes today. If you want to see a set that turns gadabouts into homebodies, look at the new RCA Victor Regency console, one of the 14 new RCA Victor models for 1951. It has great big 17-inch television, clearer and more powerful than ever, framed in a luxurious cabinet of authentic Regency styling. See the RCA Victor Regency console, and then bring your family happily homeward every day with America's favorite and best-looking television, RCA Victor. <laughs> Let me see, I better get this down here now. For the formal occasion, the well-dressed gent will wear top hat, white tie, and tails. Now, what else? Trousers. <laughs> well, that's obvious, and don't be such a wise guy, Asher. Say, Archie. What, Miss Duffy? That man over there is putting English pennies in the pinball machine. English pennies? How's he doing? He's losing his pen. <laughs> I write one lousy fashion lecture and I have to listen to all these Pence jokes. 
Oh, wait a minute. That's out to treat you. And, gee, I ain't figured out an introduction for the guy. Now, now let me see. What, what could I say? Ladies and gentlemen, announcing Mr. Arthur Treacher. How do you like that? The ham announces himself. Treat you, Arthur. How do you like that? Here you are, back at the tavern, and I can't think of nothing to say. You can think of nothing to say? No. Well, if I remember you correctly, old boy, it'll take you half an hour to say it. <laughs> Just a minute. Are you inferring that I talk a lot? I merely state that you're inclined to be excessively verbose. <laughs> well, that's different. <laughs> Well, uh, tally ho to the tavern, anyhow, Arthur. Let me look at you. Well, I see you haven't changed the particle, old sock. Hmm. Let me take a look at you. Uh huh. I see you haven't changed the sock, old particle. <laughs> For tuppence and six quid, I'd knock this guy back to Pickle Dilly Square. <laughs> now, look here, old fruit. What is it, old bread? <laughs> Oh, bread. Would you prefer crumb? <laughs> yeah, rent some. Look, teacher, you better be careful. You know, I got a pretty biting wit myself. Your wit isn't biting, it's teething. <laughs> Touche, teacher. Now, leave us cut the insults and just be yourself. We, we all know that underneath that sour exterior of yours, you, you're really a swell guy. You, you got a lot of the milk of human kindness. Of course. I'm filled with it. Can't you hear it? Slosh! Slosh! Hey, <laughs> you're loosening up already. Mr. Uh, Chief, huh? I would like to meet this particular gentleman. Oh, yes, Yasha. This is Arthur Treacher. Arthur, this is our new waiter, Yasha Panyaslavnik. Mr. Panyaslavnik, Mr. Treacher. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> That's very funny. That's very funny. What's very funny? This boy speaks with an accent. <laughs> He comes from the Bronx section of Sussex on the Wessex. <laughs> oh. Oh, he's an Englishman. Yeah. Well, I'm always glad to meet an Englishman. It makes me feel very much at home. Why? Are you English? Mm, just part. Uh, was your mother English? Like a crumpet. And your father? Like a bald kipper. <laughs> well, if your mother and father were both English, why are you only part English? We are a very large family. <laughs> Yasha, desist the conversation and take the gentleman's coat. By all means. Now, just a second. Do you know what to do when one takes the gentleman's coat? <laughs> do I know what to do? <laughs> well, do you? Most of course. What? I go through the pockets. <laughs> oh, Yasha, please. One takes a hanger and hangs the coat up. I hang it up. That's right. Oh, and then I go through the pocket. Look, I'd better take care of the coat Archie. myself. Perhaps I'd better take care of the coat myself. I'll just toss it over on this hat rack. I beg your pardon. Uh, Arthur, this is Miss Duffy. Of course, I could easily understand how you made the mistake, but uh, the hat rack is the one over there, the one without the mustache. Well, Mr. Teacher, it's been three years. I guess you've forgotten me. Oh, not at all. I've kept in touch with you through my nightmares. <laughs> oh, Mr. Treacher. <laughs> what is it? Well, Mr. Treacher. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> Lay an egg? <laughs> I'm going to ask a little favor of you. You see, I've never been kissed by a really tall man. And? Well, Mr. Treacher, or may I call you Arthur? Call me Shorty. If that's your attitude, go kiss yourself. As far as I'm concerned, it wouldn't be worth the trip. Look, look Miss Duffy, get back to the cash register and ring up another no sale, will you? Now, where was we, Arthur? Uh, oh, yes, I was about to ask you about your acting career and how it's coming along. Oh, I've done a few flicks. 
<laughs> few flicks, huh? Yes, and a few shots on the wireless and some appearances on video. Well, keep it up, kid. One of these days you'll be in movies, radio, and television. <laughs> But in the meantime, uh, what are you doing for the eating money? Well, confidentially, old boy, I've been toying around with the notion of becoming a Western star, a sort of British hop-along Cassidy. Oh, splendid notion, Pod. Uh, what are you going to call yourself, tumbling tumbleweed treacher? <laughs> of course not. I'm sorry, I was just kidding. What are you going to call yourself? Dash it all, Deverington. <laughs> Dash it all, Dunnington. A real tough guy, huh? Ooh, of the vilest sort. There's one scene especially that I love. It shows off my vicious character. What happens? Well, one night, another chap, a, a cattle rustler, approaches me at the chuck wagon, and adjusting his monocle, he exclaims to me, Dunnington, you are an unmitigated bounder. You can't. And how did you admonish him? Well, completely undaunted, I look him right in the eye and I say, See here, old chap, when you call me that, grimace. <laughs> well, I, think it's, uh, I think it served the bounder jolly well right. He had a grimace coming to him. Uh, say, uh, you don't happen to have a part in this flicker for me, do you? Well, now, let me look at you. By Joe! You know, I have. You have? Yes. In the final scene, the villain and the hero have a duel to the death on a hilltop. Yeah, huh? Yeah. And it's towards evening in the light of the setting sun. And what do I play? Well, with that suit, you can be the setting sun. <laughs> well, thank you. It's about time you noticed me, no suit. I said, wherever did you get it? At a fire sale? Treat you, that just happens to be a lucky guess. No guess at all, old man. The lapels are still burning. <laughs> It happens that I'm writing a lecture on men's clothes, and I, I personally yeah. resent... Watch! What is it? Who's the long drink of vinegar? <laughs> My word! The thing! <laughs> and this happens to be Arthur Treacher, who... Don't know it yet, but may deliver the lecture that I wrote on men's fashions. Oh, tell me something, Arch. What? Does he always look that way, or does his corns hurt him? Hartley, <laughs> you'll have to excuse him, you see. Finnegan here had an unusual childhood. Uh, when he was born, they kept the hot water and threw the baby away. <laughs> to get back to business. Uh, say, Mr. Treacher, I have a problem. That's quite obvious, old boy. <laughs> Thank you very much. My problem is this. Next week, I'm expecting to get myself a full dress suit. Yeah? Well, with this full dress suit, should I wear white studs or black studs? Well, that varies according to the taste of the undertaker. <laughs> But I ain't dead. Please, please, old man, leave us not split hairs. <laughs> but, Mr. Treacher, this suit is not for a funeral. It's for my wedding. Your wedding? Most of course. Well, is it an afternoon or evening affair? Oh, I expect it to last longer than that. <laughs> Just a second, yes, sir? When are you getting married? Shortly, just as soon as I get the license. As soon as you get the license? Well, congratulations. Tell me, uh, where did you get the girl? Don't they give you that with the license? <laughs> and thank you, Milton Delug. Marty, <clears throat> what is this about a fashion lecture? Well, now that the menagerie is left, I can tell you. You see, the policeman's footpath and discussion club is meeting here tonight, and I wrote a lecture about clothes and... Uh, I know how tough it is to make a buck in your racket these days, and I was wondering, Arthur, if you could possibly... Uh, uh, what I mean to say is, uh, could you see your way... Read a lecture? Didn't like it, old boy. This guy's a bigger ham than I thought he was. <laughs> you rather, there's nothing I'd rather do than deliver a public address. Are you any good at it? Oh, rather, yes. I have a wonderful technique. You see, first I convulsed my listeners with an extremely funny anecdote. Now let me see how does that story go. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, oh yes. Oh, very good, yes. Oh, oh, oh yes, very good. Oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, tell me, Costello. <clears throat> <laughs> What's the story about? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it's about razors. Razors, huh? Yeah. It's very funny. It's really awfully good. It occurred in India at the time I was doing my bit as a thief fusilier in His Majesty's Seventh Booner Pistols. We were hunting Saba. Saba? Yes. Native jargon for tiger, you know. Uh-huh. Yes. Well, sir, we were using goats as bait, and I was tethering a goat to a banyan tree when suddenly Saba emerged, smiling from the underbrush. He snarled. I raised my weapon. He charged. I aimed. I fired. He fell. Great story, what? <laughs> Very mirth provoking. <laughs> but what's that got to do with razors? Well, it was a very close shave. <laughs> It's easy to see that Archie and Arthur Treacher have very little in common. But here are two guys that have a lot in common. Bob, do you realize we only have one thing in common? Hardly enough for a happy marriage, is it? <laughs> What's that, Bing? Chesterfields, of course. We both like them, we both sell them. And we'd better get to selling them now. You know, folks, better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. How do you know they're mild? Well, you just make our mildness test. You buy them, open them up, and enjoy that milder aroma. Then smoke a Chesterfield. You'll know it's milder because it smokes milder. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. So, always buy Chesterfield. Join me, Junior. Let's sum it up musically. Chesterfield, Chesterfield always takes first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. So, open a pack, give them a smell, then you'll smoke them. Now, let me see. For cocktail parties... The well-dressed man must be careful in his selection of colors for his sweatshirts. <laughs> if the hostess is serving martinis, it is preferable not to wear a pea green sweatshirt as it may clash with the olive. <laughs> However, this is not a must as the hostess may be colorblind. Now, for an afternoon at the races... Good evening, Archie, me boy. Oh, good evening, Officer Clancy. By the way, how many of you as cops is going to be here for the fashion lecture tonight? Sixteen. Sixteen? I thought there was going to be nineteen. Well, you see, the, the commissioner is ordered to drive against the bookies. Ordered to drive against bookies? Why would that keep three guys away? The boys have been busy placing last-minute bets. <laughs> see, well, we'll be ready for them in a second. By the way, Treacher, have you looked over the fashion lecture that I wrote? Indeed I have. Uh, what did you think of it? Well, it would take the heart out of Schaffner and Marx. <laughs> Feature. After that joke about the Puna pistols, I wouldn't talk. Well, look, Clancy, we got to get going. We can't wait for them three other guys. Now, uh, let me have your whistle, will you? My whistle? Got to start the meeting. <whistles> the meeting of the Policeman's Annual Friday Night Footpath and Discussion Club will now come to order. I now present our lecturer, Mr. Arthur Treacher. No record. Hello, flat feet. Hmm. Leave us begin our discourse appertaining to men's tonsoriality. Archie, tonsoriality? Yeah, men's clothes. What do you think it meant, a barber shop? <laughs> Proceed ahead. Hmm. The first clothes that were known to primitive men were loincloths. But loincloths was difficult to get because loins is very ferocious beasts. <laughs> They do not stand still while you take off their cloths. <laughs> so, primitive man was dressed very naked until the invention of the sheep. The skin of the sheep is very valuable. From the outside we get wool, and from the inside we get diplomas. Archie. <laughs> oh, Archie, you know, this is really abominable. Yeah, and you ain't come to the best part. <laughs> Chapter two. The greatest step in clothing was the invention of a cotton gin machine. A machine for removing the gin from cotton. <laughs> How do people all know that? Previously, because the cotton was full of gin, it wasn't good for nothing. <laughs> but after Eli Whitney's invention, cotton became the equal of wool on account of wool never touched the stuff. <laughs> Oh, now, really, Archie, 
Archie, where do you get your facts? Uh, research. Research? Yeah, I'm dreaming them up. Uh, <laughs> proceed ahead. Very well. Chapter three. Modern fashions. For casual country occasions like the formal fox hunt or informal pig sticking, the well-fopped gentleman should wear a tan steppen riding habit with magenta jod hoppers, depending on the color of the horse, of course. <laughs> In case he is traversing Indian country, it would also be prudent to bring along a pair of rubber-soled mock suckins. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Treacher. The members of the club are getting a little restless. I'm sorry, Officer Clancy, but I mean... Yes, so few of us are fox hunters, you know. <laughs> what out of this, Clancy? We're coming to the part about policemen's clothes now. Now, continue, Treacher. And now to Chapter 4, entitled, How to be Neat While Walking the Beat. <laughs> Foot patrolmen would be wise to have their shoes stretched so that they are large and comfortable. Mounted patrolmen will require other adjustments. <laughs> Gee, this is an insult to the department. Stop the lecture. What do you mean, an insult? You heard me. Now, who wrote that lecture? I'll have the culprit thrown in jail. Preacher, who wrote that thing? Did you? Look, Clancy, I might as well confess the truth. Thank you, Archie. You're right, Clancy. Treacher did write it. Now, just a minute. Now, really. All right, you know alibis. Come along with me. But that's it, old man. I just can't go to the Who's Go. I haven't a thing to wear. Well, don't worry, Treacher. As we say in fashion circles, when in doubt, wear stripes. <laughs> And, Clancy, leave me congratulate you. On what? You have just captured one of the greatest desperados of all time. Dash it all, Detherington, of the fifth Pune of Pistols. If you'd like to know a quick, easy way to ease the pain of a headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, then, by all means, try Anison. Your own dentist or physician may, at one time or another, have handed you an envelope containing Anison tablets. Then, you already know how incredibly fast and effectively Anison brings relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. For your own sake... Try Anison. Anison is sold to you on this guarantee. If the first few tablets do not give you all the relief you want, as fast as you want it, you may return the unused portion and your money will be refunded. You can get Anison tablets at any drug counter. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. <laughs> Listen again next week, friends, to Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribed feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. The best cigarette for you to smoke. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. Listen tomorrow evening for The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, the Saturday night feature of the All-Star Festival. (laughs) 